Welcome everyone back to the channel, Flat Tire Dan. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, so if you follow us on Instagram, flat underscore tire underscore Dan, and if you don't, you should. Uh, you would have seen late last night or today sometime that um, well, today's episode is we've started the, the restoration of our 2006 Ford F-350 uh, 6 liter turbo diesel dually. Um, the mechanical end of it. And, uh, and I, I mentioned to you before, we're going to kind of chronicle that on the, on the channel here. And so, uh, we've started that process and I kind of wanted to share with you today, kind of where we're at and what we've done so far. Um, so to kind of get right into it, I guess we'll get into the cosmetic end of the truck first. Haven't done a whole lot. Although, um, in the beginning here, you'll see that, um, we did end up going with seat covers on the interior on those front seats. Um, they were just a little dirtier than I thought they would be and they weren't cleaning up as well as I liked. And the, like I said, the driver's seat had a, had a hole in it. Um, and we installed the CB radio, all stuff you've already seen. On the exterior, I got some OEM touch-up paint from Ford, went around, kind of did some of the bigger stuff on the black, you know, um, areas, kind of touched that up, kind of polished it a little more. I, the paint really needs sort of a good buffing, right? But black is, is tricky. And so I'm kind of hoping to get with some of my friends and somebody who might know a little bit more about that than me and maybe take a buffing wheel to the truck, maybe even in the spring, you know, once it gets warm again. But that's really my only intentions for the exterior paint. So not so much cosmetically have we done to the truck so far, but we have gotten in, as you saw from the picture, hopefully you saw from the picture on Instagram, the mechanical end of the restoration of this truck. Now, when I mentioned in the last episode that I'm aware of, you know, sort of the reputation and the concerns in the six liter power stroke community of, you know, problems that can occur if you don't take preventative measures with these trucks. And, and to kind of narrow that down, and I apologize if I get too into the weeds with this stuff or if I get... Um, like over explaining some of this stuff for those of you who already know, but I kind of figure that there's people on both ends of the spectrum kind of watching this episode. So I'm going to try and be thorough um, without getting too technical, but these trucks, these, these six liter power stroke diesels um, are basically it's suggested that you do something called bulletproofing right to them um, as they get into higher mileage, especially if you don't know how well they were maintained. Right. And so to define, I guess, bulletproofing to, to people who don't know what it is in a relatively uh, generic uh, explanation, I actually found a good explanation online uh, from an article uh, from Motor Trend. So it wasn't necessarily like a Ford forum or stuff like that. And they were kind of sort of generalized what they suggest you do as far as preventative ma maintenance for these six liter diesels. And so what they say is uh, the basic fixing or bulletproofing of the Ford six liter diesel um, revolve around the oil cooler and exhaust gas recirculation, the EGR valve systems. In short, the factory stacked plate type oil cooler easily becomes plugged with gunk from the cooling system. When this happens, it restricts fluid flow to the EGR cooler, which in turn then boils what little fluid it has flowing through it and bursts. This burst allows exhaust gases to enter the coolant system, mimicking a blown head gas gasket and sometimes actually causing damage to the gasket and the heads. So that is kind of it in a nutshell, for those of you who don't know, right? Um, and so they suggest that what you do is you get into the internals, replacing the oil cooler and then the EGR cooler to make sure that you don't have this type of problem. And then you get into head gaskets and, and heads and things like that and all important stuff. But usually, um, in speaking with, with the guy that I align myself with uh, to help me with the work, higher mileage than we have. And, and for trucks that maybe you either don't know or haven't been well maintained, and ours has. Now, before I forget, the guy, I mentioned him in the last episode, again in this episode, the guy that we're going to be end up doing the work with on this truck is a, is a place in Quakertown, Pennsylvania, which is local to us, and it's called Dan's Diesel and Automotive Service, right? Specializing in kind of diesel truck repairs. Um, I met him a few weeks back, seems really knowledgeable, excited to work on this project with us. So I want to give a shout out to Dan's because so far they are as advertised. So anyway, this bulletproofing is kind of the go-to, and I assumed that that would be the first move for me. But when I met with Dan, and I explained to him that, you know, the truck runs great, but it, cold starts are tough. It kind of rattles like a like a locomotive, and um, and until the truck gets up to, like, temperature, it kind of has what I, I thought was a miss or a stammer or something like that. And what he explained to me 
is that more than likely, after looking at the service records, he, he was able to confirm more than likely the, the fuel injectors had never been worked on or serviced or replaced or anything on this truck. There's eight of them, one per cylinder. It's a fuel injected motor. And, um, and then that would really sort of severely affect how the truck would start and run, right? And that because I'm not crazy high mileage and my truck's been serviced pretty well so far that we do the, the fuel injectors first, get the truck running the way that it should, and then down the road get into the bulletproofing. So that's what we ended up doing. Now, like I said, without getting too far into the weeds, uh, basically I'll just kind of walk you through the process uh, briefly for those of you who don't know. So this is a fuel injector from a 2006, 2004, 2005, that era, six liter Ford Power Stroke diesel. All right, so the bottom end here is what sits in the cylinder that injects diesel fuel into the cylinder for combustion. That diesel fuel enters the injector here in these little ports, right? It's got some O-rings and stuff along the way to kind of seal it in its hole. Um, up here is kind of the, the valve mechanism that opens and closes and, and creates, it, creates the injection. That is controlled by this um, electronic connection, which goes back to what's called the FICM, the fuel injection control module that controls when it's supposed to inject. But what controls opening and closing of this valve, believe it or not, is high pressure oil that is injected into the top of the fuel injector. And when that's injected, it opens this valve and then allows diesel fluid to get injected into the cylinder. Probably much more complicated than that, but simply put, that's kind of how it works. All right, there's eight of these, one per cylinder, right? And so we replaced all eight. Now, while we were in there, there's a couple other things that he suggested we replace since we had it all apart. All this stuff is kind of underneath the valve covers of this of the six liter um, diesel motor. So, like I mentioned, the, the fuel injectors are driven by high pressure oil. That oil is delivered to the fuel to the oil rail, which delivers the oil to each injector under the valve cover, which really doesn't have much to be replaced other than some O-rings, which we replaced on it. That is delivered by um, what is called a standpipe, right? Now this standpipe is sort of a connection tube that goes from the oil pump up into under the valve covers to the, uh, to the oil rail, right? This delivers the oil. Now, a lot of people don't bother to do this when they're getting into this because they don't really see the necessity of it. It's pretty simple. There's not much to it, right? But what Dan explained to me is that these O-rings here, here, and here are critical to sustaining oil pressure. It's high pressure oil that fires these fuel injectors. And so if you get any loss in that oil pressure by any leakage within the system, which could happen around these O-rings, it'll affect the, the performance of the vehicle. Cold starts are tough, right? Because it's not getting adequate oil pressure. And even more so, what happens if you let it go too far is they, it's called warm no start, where the vehicle will start when it's cold. You go out and you drive around, you're doing whatever, and you stop somewhere and you shut the truck off and it's warm, right? But the oil has gotten thinner, lost viscosity because it's warm. You come back out, you go ahead and you start the truck. Now with even thinner oil, more is escaping around these O-rings, right? And you don't have adequate oil pressure to fire the injectors and the truck won't start. You have to let it cool down for hours before it'll start again. So even though this stuff seems pretty simple and you know nothing compared to the complexity of the injectors, right? Pretty complex module there. Um, as important to replace these as those while you're in there doing the work. Now, the oil rails um, are made to fit either side, right? So they have holes at either end to supply oil too, right, with this with this uh, standpipe. Well, the other end, the end that goes unused, needs to be plugged, right, by what they call a dummy plug. Again, basically just sealing a hole in the oil system, but it's got these critical O-rings here and here, right, that if not working properly, will allow oil pressure to escape. And then the... Um, the oil pressure that fires the fuel injectors won't be at adequate pressure and then the fuel injectors won't work right. So anyway, that's sort of it in a nutshell. Now, Dan explained to me like, hey, listen, you know, it's going to make the truck run better. It's going to make it start up uh, easier, that kind of stuff. And, and you know, I was like, okay, well, if you say so. And, and to tell you the truth, like, it is a remarkable difference. 
um, from when I got it. Like, unfortunately, so at the beginning of the episode, I took a little video of, of a cold start. It was maybe 32 degrees last night. Not super cold, but cold enough. And before I did this, I would start the truck up after sitting overnight like that. And it would it would rattle like a freight train for like the first 30 seconds. Those of you who have them know what I'm talking about. Right? And then it would kind of settle down and just kind of idle for a while till it got up to, to temperature. And then, like I mentioned before, and you know, even after I let it idle and, and warm up for 10, 20 minutes, whatever it was, it still would take a while before it would actually perform without maybe a miss or a stammer, right? Especially with the colder weather. The difference that, that this change made, replacing these fuel injectors and the standpipe and the dummy plugs and the O-rings on the, on the oil um, delivery system is remarkable. Um, it feels like a new truck. It feels like it added 50 horsepower. Um, you, you saw in the, in the beginning here that the startup is, is just flawless now, smooth. Gets right up to idle, no rattling or missing or anything for a while. Uh, really a huge improvement. And, you know, like I, I'm, I'm trusting this guy, Dan, who's working on my truck. And he certainly wants us to get to the bulletproofing, and we're going to. Um, but... His recommendation was to do this first based on sort of what I was telling him about the truck and him looking at the service records of my truck and seeing that it's not incredibly high mileage and that it's been serviced and maintained well. So that's what we did. Um, really happy. Um, I probably missed some stuff. So so if you have questions or anything, hit me up in the comments. I, you know, I did a lot of research and Dan was good with kind of let me follow along with him and, and seeing what was going on. So if I missed anything or if you have any questions, hit me up. I probably have the answers at least concerning the, the, the fuel injector and oil delivery system at, at this point. Um, and I realized when I posted on Instagram that I don't necessarily have a name for this vehicle yet. So if you guys have some ideas on, on a good name for the truck, so I can kind of reference it in the title of the episodes coming up. And, uh, and hopefully you guys will be enjoying this kind of diesel content. Um, New Year's Eve today. So, uh, so happy New Year's, everybody. Be smart, be safe, you know, spend it with family and friends. And, uh, and then we'll see you again after the new year. We're actually, um, a couple days we're heading out of town. We're going skiing for, for a little while, meeting up with some family we haven't seen in a while. So we're really looking forward to that. But we'll catch up to you um, when we get back. But guys, always, thanks so much for everybody tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Um, we really do appreciate everybody subscribing to the channel. If you're watching the content, you're enjoying what we're doing, please do subscribe. It does, it does help us out, um, you know, reach more viewers, that kind of stuff. And then again, like I said, if you have questions or anything, I probably glanced, you know, over some stuff today. Uh, hit me up in the comments or go ahead and follow us on Instagram. We'll follow you back and we can communicate there. And uh, remember, stay tuned for more content from Flat Tire Dan. <laughs> we'll see you.